Hey guys, and welcome back to Say Mojo Homestead. So as I had mentioned in this weekend's video, I'm going to do a plant spotlight. I love these because it just is an opportunity for me to sort of show my landscaper side. So today I am going to be looking at and talking about goji berries. I'm gonna share with you guys what I do know about these things. Now, if you watch this weekend's video, you heard this story, I'm gonna tell it again real quick, but these guys are super hardy plants, and I know that from experience. I bought three of these about a year ago, and just got slack with getting them in the ground. They sat in pots, they got neglected, they went a very long time, like months, without water. And, you know, the tops all died off. I was afraid that I had just lost all of them. So I got them into water, had them in a bowl where they could sit in water, and they came back. And then I did the same thing again. But then they came back again. So these guys are very resilient. These are goji berry bushes. Now, these are still very, very small, again, because I neglected them. They do grow fast. Had I gotten these in the ground right when I got them, they would be probably three times the size. So they have really cool looking flowers. It's a smaller flower, but really pretty, really attractive. Um, and those guys will form the berries. Now, goji berries, if you're not really familiar with them, they are a red berry that's about this long and a little bit more narrow than they are long. And they do turn red. There are some other varieties that are like orange and yellow. Um, those are more cultivated varieties, but they're all the same. Now, there are two different goji berry types. Um, one is technically wolfberry which grows a little bit different than your typical goji berry, but both still considered goji berries and very slight differences in there. Now, a goji berry has almost a bitter sweet kind of flavor to it. Um, obviously, the, more, the longer you leave it on there, the riper it gets, the sweeter it's gonna get. But it's used a lot in Chinese cooking, in soups and stuff like that. They'll even make teas out of it. You may know that it is a super fruit. It is apparently really, really high in antioxidants. They have a lot of components about them that help to get rid of all those free radicals that you have in your body. So it goes a long way for just your overall health um, by eating these things. Now, the plant itself, it is a drought tolerant plant. They uh, actually will grow in the deserts in China and with very, very little water. So they can sustain long periods of little water. They actually don't like to have too much water. Another thing about goji berries, keep in mind if you're gonna grow them, is they're very free form. So they'll grow up and kind of arch over and can take up a lot of space. Now, some people do trellis them. I'm thinking that we planted these in the row with our boysenberries. And so we're already talking about maybe running like a just a straight vertical trellis system. And I think I'm going to bring them all the way down here and try to trellis these guys and treat them more like a lot of your brambles and stuff like that, uh, like raspberries, blackberries, boysenberries, those type things, and try to grow them more like that. Now, they do have some of the same bad habits as those. They will sucker off of roots. Um, they can pop up kind of, you know, three to four feet even away from the plant. I have not experienced that yet because ours are still new. From what I understand, they are fairly easy to remove and they're not overly aggressive to where they're just gonna absolutely take over a place. But if you are in a small garden situation or have a tight spot, it may be good to put these in a pot or some type of raised bed situation to where you can keep them contained and keep them from taking over all of those other areas in your garden or your yard, or wherever it is. Now, one plant will produce a lot of berries. Um, one plant can easily supply you with enough berries to get through a year. Two plants will give you more than enough. Um, you don't have to have two plants for pollination sake. These are ones that will set fruit with only one plant present. So that's another plus to them. You don't have to have more than one. Now, while it is similar to brambles, one thing that it's got on brambles is that it has a very long fruiting period. Here in South Carolina, it would not be unusual for them to start fruiting 
in June. Definitely gonna have fruit by the first part of July, but they will go all the way through till September and sometimes even as late as right now, October. As you can see, ours is blooming. So it will fruit. They're super cold hardy. So I don't know uh, once we get into colder temperatures, what that will do with fruiting. Uh, if these guys will actually be able to ripen to maturity or not, uh, maybe we'll, if I remember, I will let you know in a later video when that happens. But um, yeah, so that is one thing that is very beneficial with these things is they will continue to fruit and fruit and fruit. It's not just a one-time thing once a year. These things are dried to be preserved, um, dried like raisins or craisins or something like that. Um, again, you can put them, use them fresh in stews or soups. I don't know any recipes right off, but hey, we might try some next year. I don't know. Um, I also am very curious to know what type of jam they would make. Uh, I think that they would be really good. Maybe a mixed berry jam or something. The last thing I wanna say is that they really do need as much sunlight as possible to get maximum yield. Now these guys really could use like minimum six hours. Like these are all out full sun type plants. Um, you really wanna get them in a place. Ideally, if you could give them like eight to 10 hours of sun, that would be the best. But as long as they have a minimum of six hours of sun, um, you should get pretty good fruit yield on them. Anything less, they're gonna do okay, but you're just not gonna get the same flowering and fruiting uh, rate that you would if it has full sun, ideal conditions. Where we have them situated, I think they'll be okay uh, as our orchard trees start to grow. If not, I'll just dig them up and move them find a different place. But for now, they're nice and cozy right here in the orchard. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up if you like this material. Um, if you are interested in the other things that we're doing out here, go ahead and subscribe. And also hit that notification, hit that bell down there. That will let you know when we put out new videos so you won't miss any of them. We do try to get about three out a week and just cover a whole range of topics and anything really pertaining to homesteading and just what we're doing in life. So have a great week, guys. Be careful, take care of yourself, and be blessed.